We're all good. So welcome everybody tonight to our detoxification masterclass. I am so excited to be here because I have so much to say about detoxification, um, but I'm going to try to keep it to 45 minutes tonight because um, I, I really would like to take questions afterwards. Oh, I just lost everybody. In your body, um, I didn't know that it was playing a part in my my diagnosis. Um, so I was diagnosed 10 years ago with MS. That's my story. Everybody really knows it. Like I said, um, MS is an autoimmune condition. It's inflammatory. Um, and at the time of that diagnosis, I was exercising. I took supplements. I, I did not eat fast food. I gave up dairy. Um, I really thought I was doing everything to protect my health. I would have bet, I always say a million dollars on Sunday night before I felt debilitated Monday morning of MS. What happened was Monday morning, I woke up and couldn't feel the right side of my body. I um, presented as a stroke. So I went immediately to the emergency room um, where they immediately took me in for a CAT scan because they saw what was happening, thought I had a stroke. Um, I was 40 years old. Um, right away, they saw something on the CAT scan, told me that they said it's either a stroke or it's MS. So I didn't know which one I had hoped it was. Um, didn't know which was, would be worse or what I can recover from. Um, I was in my first year of chiropractic college at the time. We were living a very um, active lifestyle. I had three kids under the age of 15. Um, we were always hiking or um, camping and just um, playing. The kids were playing sports. We were always running and doing things. Like I said, I was in full-time school, graduate school. So it was. I was really busy, a busy person. Um, and I was just getting through, getting through life. And all of a sudden, like, Overnight, I felt debilitated. So it was very shocking. Um, but this is why I'm here, because I'm here to tell you, it took me time. It, I, I was diagnosed. I knew when I was diagnosed, I, I just sat in the hospital alone. I didn't want my husband to bring the kids to the hospital. I didn't want them to see what was happening to me. I was always healthy. I never had a cold or sickness or anything. I didn't want my kids to see me laying in a hospital bed debilitated. So I asked my husband to keep them at home, not to bring them there. So I sat there alone in my hospital bed and I, I just asked God, like, why now? Why when I'm in my first year of chiropractic school, I'm 40 years old, I thought I finally had my life figured out and I was on my career path that I was going to help people. I was really excited about this. So I, I was just asking, why now did you debilitate me? Um, but the answer came to me pretty quickly that I was debilitated because I had to reverse this in myself. I could do it. I knew I could do it. I have the unfailing belief in that body. I just, I always believe in the body. Um, I know there's a slide in here, but I'll say it now that if you remove the interference from the body, the body will heal itself. That is how we were made. The creator made us perfect by design, um, but the modern world today is interfering with that design. And that's the problem. And that's what's causing a lot of the sickness. So I realized that I was my first patient. Um, now I see patients all over the country um, helping them reverse um, illnesses and disease that is not getting to diagnosed in the medical world. So they're undiagnosed illnesses um, that they don't understand where it's coming from and they're getting very frustrated. Um, so that's what I think, that's why I, I think that was my gift from God, my MS um, diagnosis um, and the journey to reverse it became my path to help people. Um, and I believe that what I was always looking to, what was my motivating factor was my kids. Um, I didn't want my kids pushing me around in a wheelchair. So I was told that I had five years until I was in a wheelchair, 10 years until I died. So it was, my prognosis was I would be dead at 50. So if my 50th birthday was last year. It's my 51st birthday. I am not dead. Um, and I'm helping people all over the country with their health. So I couldn't be happier with what I'm doing. Um, but I, I realized today that with all the calls we get, me and Jessica actually got bombarded today with calls and texts and emails. We were constantly talking all day today because people need answers. They're not getting them today. They're very frustrated. So we just, we need to be speaking more about this. We need to make people understand what's happening in their bodies um, and make them understand the body's amazing. I find today people with losing faith in the body and they're depending too much on medications or um, other things that they think will protect their health. I'll tell you this, nothing outside of the body will make you healthy. 
it'll relieve symptoms. That's all it's going to do. It's not going to heal anything. So what we do here in this office is we look for root causes of issues. So what I was doing when I was diagnosed um, and I started this journey, I knew I had to remove the interferences, but the thing was, I, like I said, I was taking supplements. I was eating well, I was not eating dairy. I was, um, under chiropractic care, I exercised, I would have bet a million dollars. Like I said, that I'm healthy. What were my interferences? Where are they? I'm doing everything right, but wrong. No, obviously I wasn't because I have MS. I have an autoimmune disease. I have an inflammatory disease. What is wrong? So the journey started to uncover these root causes or these you know, interferences in my body. So I declined the medication that was offered to me um, because they told me each time I took it, I'd feel flu-like symptoms. I wasn't okay with that because like I told you, I was a busy, busy person. I wasn't going to be debilitated by flu-like symptoms daily. Um, I just, I just said, there's no way I'm going to go down this road. I'm not accepting this prognosis and I'm going to reverse this thing. And that's my mindset. It wasn't a mindset from the beginning. It has been for the past 10 years. So I'm here to tell you not about me. This isn't about me. I want to be sure you're clear of that. It's not about me. It's just about how amazing our bodies are and they have the ability to do anything they need to do and you can heal yourself and you can protect yourself and you can restore your health, but you need to find those root cause interferences. So that's what we're gonna be talking about. That's what me and Jessica do here at this office. We find root causes of disease. I'll explain why, how we do that and we remove them and the body heals itself. So it's just, the body's amazing. And that's the thing I want everybody to know. So. Like I said, everyone's always looking for the diagnosis and always looking, it almost feels to me like people are proud of diagnosis. The scary thing to me now is like 11 year old. I had three conversations today with 11 year olds with, with problems and issues and 14 year olds and 17 year olds. This week we've been kind of bombarded by young adults. They're just getting diagnosed too early. They're getting put on medication too early. There's, there's really no reason for this. If you find interferences and remove them, you have so much hope and can change, really change everything. So this is what I was talking about. That's BJ Palmer. Um, so the body, if it, you remove the interferences, the body's amazing, it will heal itself. Um, and this is another one. This is Herbert Shelton, one of my favorite doctors from the late 1800s, early 1900s. They, they had the idea of what healthy to be back then. I, I, I look to them all the time. But curing disease without removing its cause is like trying to sober up a drunk man while he continues to drink. I mean, so if you think about what that says, like if you're not removing the root cause and just take a medication to relieve a symptom, you're not fixing the problem. So I want, that's the thing, that's a message I want to get across tonight and what's, what those root causes are. So things that are on the rise, um, if the present, if it, it keeps going the way it is by 2032, which I can't believe we're ready in 2021. So in 2032, um, one out of two children will be on the autism spectrum. So you know autism is so, so prevalent in the world today. Um, I remember when I was a kid, so I'm 50, gonna be 51 in a couple months, you know, I knew one person who had autism and they weren't in my school. It was somebody, a famous person's son. And that's the only time I ever heard of autism. So now it's one in two kids are saying they're gonna be on the autism spectrum. And that's just unacceptable to me. Um, this, this was Jessica saying, um, trying to clean your house with kids, kids and it's like brushing your teeth um, while eating Oreos. So that was back to trying to sober up a drunk without moving the drink, the, the drink or getting them to stop drinking. This was Jessica's way of saying it, another way to get you to understand it. So trying to clean your house for the kids in it is like trying to brush your teeth while you're eating Oreos. So that was awesome. So this is this is the functional kind of uh, functional. I don't like to talk about functional medicine because there's issues with that also in my mind. Um, but functional health care is what I practice and I do. So we're a healthcare program. So we are looking to restore your health and prevent things from happening. So we're preventative and restorative. So we want to get your body free from illness and put you on a path to optimal health. That's what we do here with functional healthcare. Yeah. Functional medicine. Well, why don't they just, why don't they just take the shuttle? Or the, the, the... Sorry, somebody wasn't muted. Yeah. So what functional, this is a functional medicine model, but what functional medicine looks at is it's, you know, in the medical world, they're looking at the top of an iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. That's what the symptoms are. That's what you're feeling or experiencing. But what's underneath an iceberg is a huge mass that you don't see under the water. That's what the root causes are. So some of those things are chronic inflammation, hormone imbalances, digestive and nutritional imbalances, weight loss resistance, autoimmunity. 
I had all of those. Um, some of the other symptoms I suffered from was hair loss. I was losing hair by the job. When I washed my hair, it looked like half of my hair was in the, the drain. And it got so scary at the point. I thought I was going to be bald by the way I was losing hair. I used to collect my hair every day and put it in a little Ziploc bag and keep those baggies to make sure, just to kind of get a gauge on how much hair I was losing. So I was experiencing everything everyone's experiencing today. What I didn't know is that I had autoimmunity raging through my body. So I was tired. I was, I had 60 pounds to lose as healthy as I thought I was. I had weight loss resistance. I could not lose weight. Like I said, I exercised. Um, that picture back there was me hiking Stone Mountain with my kids before I was diagnosed. So we were always doing stuff. We were active. Um, I ate well, vitamins, everything I said. That's why I had no idea all this stuff was going on as root causes. So my lifestyle things were taken care of. And that's the difference. You have to make the differentiation difference between what's a lifestyle choice, which is like exercise and eating well and things like that, taking supplements, but then there are root causes. So you can do all those things, but if you're not removing the root cause, you're never going to get well, never going to feel better. So that's kind of the model that I do follow is always looking for the root cause. We don't deal with symptoms. We don't give a supplement for every symptom. I was going to say that before that was the functional medicine model. So you don't walk out of my office with a bag full of supplements every time you come here. We're not about that. We, we only put people on supplements to change something in your body. And once that change is made, we check it with the, the blood um, to make sure it's being made. And then you come off the supplement. It's, I'm not in the business of trying to put you on a bag full of supplements. So in saying all that, like, do you believe the world is changing? Because toxicity is a big part of this. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. There, there's so many things going on and going into our bodies. And I think I'm just here to show you tonight what it is. Because sometimes when I say toxicity, detox has become such a buzzword in our society that I'm not talking about, you know, a 10-day juice cleanse or a three-day, you know, whatever, I don't even know. I don't even, I didn't pay attention anymore, but I know there's a lot of them. 10 day, three day, sometimes it's 30 day. That's not what I'm talking about. That will definitely help you. It helps, you know, um, clear out some downstream pathways, but it does not get rid of the root cause. So we're going to talk about the thing that does. So today, diabetes, is it epidemic or is it a plague? Um, one in three children born after the year 2000 will have diabetes at some point in their lifetime. I mean, to me, that's just it's a scary statistic, but it's true. Um, children are suffering so badly these days. So um, diabetes is one of them. You know, now there's diabetes one and a half. So we had a patient who had diabetes 1.5. Um, and what that is, it's the autoimmune form of diabetes. So most people don't even know about that one. So that's something we check for here. Um, but there's type one, type two, and then type 1.5. But kids today are suffering because all they're eating is sugar which leads to a whole, it's a whole other problem. Like this talk, actually, it could be broken up into three different talks for sure. Okay, so the new normal, 75% of American adults over 40 have been diagnosed with at least one chronic illness. So I hear this all the time, this is what we see, but people come to our office if they've been to five doctors or they've been to five functional medicine doctors, they've tried the natural route, they're not getting any answers and they're getting very frustrated. So our new patient paperwork is long. It's on, Jessica knows how long it is in pages, it's probably about 30 pages long. Um, but people have to send us, like they'll send us a, an addendum to that 30 page new patient paperwork that's three to five pages long about all the doctors they've seen, the medications they put on, they still don't feel well. So we see this happen all the time. We're seeing it more often. So that's why now we're like, we have to start talking about what's going on. Um, and toxicity is at the main root cause of, of all these things. So I'm going to talk to you about that. So your body does get exposed to toxins in so many ways. Um, so you might know a lot of these ways, um, but you may not think about it. And it may be because maybe things you did as a kid or you saw your mom do, or you just, you think it's fine. You don't think much about it, like tap water, tap water. And I'm not going to talk about each and every one of them, but tap water is such, it's such a thing with me. Like you can't drink tap water because actually medications and antibiotics are led into our water supply. And that's how they get into our body, causing all kinds of problems in our bodies. But seafood, um, plastics and seafood, um, mercury and seafood, there's so many different things, building materials, plastics, mold, air pollution, 
um, personal care products, processed foods, pesticides, glyphosate, amalgam, mercury filling, generational toxicities. I mean, the list goes on and on. You probably think of things yourself. I always talk about fabric softener, don't use it. Um, things that smell good, uh, candles that smell good, air fresheners, the little trees in your cars, get rid of all that. They're all endocrine disruptors and they're all um, will mess with your whole detoxification system in your body. Um, so the things we're used to having in our life and we, we've always used them our whole life, but that's the problem. We've been using them our whole life. So I'll tell you, I have notes here because I don't want to forget to say this. I meant to make videos on these things. I never got the chance to. Um, but you don't realize these exposures, you know, that are happening drop by drop into this bucket every single day. Our bodies were made to detoxify ourselves. They were, you know, made that way. And everybody who knows me knows I talk about the toxic bucket all the time. I talk about it often. And the video is a video, I think, on YouTube about that, if you're interested in what that is. But drop by drop, like if you're born with this bucket and drop by drop, your body will detox out from that drop, from drop each day that's added. The problem is today, it's like a fire hose in this bucket. And when that bucket overflows, all the symptoms come out. So that's what's happening to our younger generation. They're, they're just getting overflown with toxins. They're born with toxins. I mean, it's I'll go through all that and explain all that. But this bucket is an analogy I use all the time, overflowing your toxic bucket. Because all these things on this list go into that bucket and more. So it's just, it overflows and that's when the symptoms happen. So little by little, year by year, you're, you're taking these toxins in and you don't realize anything's happening. But, but what's happening is you're, it's getting in your bloodstream. It's actually your cells, your organs, your tissues are bathing in these toxins. And that's what happened to my body. Um, and the toxins will, will destroy whatever part of the body that it's, kind of latched onto. Um, for me, it was my brain. Autoimmunity was, was my brain. It was, I had eight lesions in my brain when I was diagnosed. diagnosed. So that was a big thing. But men, today, many women have thyroid issues. So that was the part of the body that it attacked for them. But a lot of it comes from the toxicity. Um, and you know, it starts, it starts little by little, drop by drop in your bucket. So I always use that analogy. The younger generation, they're getting hit twice as hard um, because I call them the glyphosate generation because in 1997, glyphosate, which is Roundup, it was this, what the food additive that was added into our food supply. So, so many things happened since then. Stephanie Seneff is a PhD who did amazing research on glyphosate. Stephanie Seneff is her name. So I would say look her up because she's the expert on that. But kids born after 1997 are really bombarded with the glyphosate. And it's not just in food, you can eat organic, you know what I mean? But it's more than that. It's in the water, it's in the meat, it's in the grain, it's what gets fed to the animal and then it gets put into their, in their bodies and then we're eating the animal. So it really goes a lot further than just eating organic. Um, it's a huge problem. Um, but I say the kids are getting hit twice as hard because they're also generational toxicities. So things like heavy metals get passed down for four generations in utero from the mom to the child. So they don't even mean for, you don't mean for that to happen. It just happens. So when I did the metals, heavy metals test for me, you know, I had mercury amalgams in my mouth. Um, and I'll tell you, go watch the smoking tooth video on YouTube because that has amazing information about what happens with the mercury amalgams that you think are just, it's fine. The dentist put it in. He must've known that it's safe. It's not safe. And what happens is every time you eat or those amalgams get heated, they're off gassing right into your brain. So that's where MS came from in me. That's what my upper root cause was of MS. And until I detox those metals, I wasn't getting completely better. And my goal was to become completely better. So I was getting a little bit better, but not all the way. I was still very anemic. So if anybody has anemia, um, or the doctor tells them they need iron, those are all things I look for in blood work to see when heavy metals are present. Um, and depending on the, their age, in the decade, if they're my age or around my age, it's definitely, we were exposed to heavy metals all the time. So there's lead in the gasoline, there's lead in the pipes, there was mercury in the amalgam fillings they put in our mouths. There was mercury in um, contact solution. So if you wore contact lenses in the 1980s, you were squirting mercury in your eye every morning when you put your contacts in. Mercurochrome was something we all put on our skin. You know that was the in every household uh, medicine cabinet to take care of a cut or a wound was mercurochrome. 
those are mercury products. We were exposed to them all the time. So heavy metal toxicity is huge in my generation. That's what my upper root cause was to my MS. So that was the one thing I wanted to talk about is that, you know, big diagnoses, you know, like MS, I would like, if you remember my prognosis, wheelchair five years, 10 years dead, um, that's a big diagnosis. No way would you think that it was caused by a toxicity, a heavy metal toxicity or any toxicity. You just would think that's too simple. It can't be that. But let me tell you, it can, because none of the medication they offered me or would have given me would not have gotten me better. If I would have accepted that medication, I would be in the wheelchair right now. So I'm so thankful I didn't. And I went on the journey to find what were the toxicities. Now I'll tell you this, I heard uh, about the heavy metal toxicity I told you, but I got a test, a hair test. They clip off a piece of your hair and they get it tested. And I was told I don't have mercury. When the doctor told me that he was a functional medicine doctor, my first functional medicine doctor, I was like, it can't be because I have all these mercury amalgams in my mouth. How can I not have metal toxicity? But I kept listening um, to another doctor who I still now I work with, um, Dr. Pompa. And, and at the time I was hearing him speak about heavy metals and heavy metals and heavy metals, and I didn't believe him either. So I don't blame people when they don't, they don't believe this is true what I'm saying, but I'm telling you it is true. And he'll tell you it is true. And he suffered from it. And we help so many people get through all kinds of illnesses because of it. Um, metals cause such an enormous problem in the body. Um, but the thing was is that I knew it couldn't be true. I knew I must have had them, but I didn't listen to him at first. So it wasn't until 2000, the end of 2016, I think, because I still was experiencing tremendous fatigue and I couldn't get past it. So I started practicing in 2016, I was going to say the end of 15, 16, and I used to make my appointments to end 11, 12 o'clock, maybe two o'clock in the day because I was like, I go home and take a nap. So I still wasn't getting past the fatigue. And I was like, well, once I get past this fatigue, I, whatever got me past this debilitating fatigue of mine, I'm going to shatter from the rooftops. And that was the thing. When I found out the heavy metal, when I got tested the right way for the heavy metals, um, I realized I guess I indeed had mercury like I had thought because I was tested the wrong way. But in addition to the mercury, I had twice as much lead. So that's the thing I want, like that was something I got that was a generational toxicity. So I know most people will say, no, I, I was never exposed to lead. I don't have lead. Well, let me tell you, if you're my age, if you're 50 years old, you have lead. Your mom was exposed to lead and she passed it on to you. Um, so lead, will interfere with um, cognitive things like memory, um, retention, um, things like that. It will affect the blood markers. It attacks it's the red blood cell. It attacks it completely. I see it all the time. You will always be B vitamin deficient. You will always be anemic. Um, and but that's what lead does. So um, I'm not gonna get all into that, but that is, it's definitely a thing. It's definitely a root cause. Um, and no lifestyle thing that you're doing will overcome that. So the thing is, I know a lot of people say they take like turmeric for inflammation, but I want to tell you this when it comes to toxicity, if you take a turmeric for inflammation, turmeric blocks the, in the phase one um, liver detoxification process, turmeric blocks or inhibits that pathway. So if you're taking turmeric for inflammation, you're blocking the detox pathways. So it's like you're not helping yourself. So it's not the answer, but that's what I mean. Simple supplements are not the solutions. Like you have to get after these root causes. And that's why that's all we do here um, to get people better. And we've helped so many people with diagnoses that were told there's nothing that can be done. You know, the medical doctors told them there's nothing that can be done, but this is not their model. Their model is not what I do. I'm not their model. I'm not knocking the medical world. We need them. They're excellent at what they do. I cannot replace them and I'm not talking bad about them. I'm just saying what I do is different. And a lot of people use me in conjunction with their medical doctor to get their animal tests and things like that. And that's awesome. Um, but they're making sure they're getting these root causes taken care of and and dealing with all this stuff that I end up confined in them. So this, this is incredible. So I, this is another thing I say, go and look this up. Um, it's called 10 Americans. Um, so it's a YouTube video. And if you put in Google or you YouTube search 10 Americans, this will come up right away. It was a Ted talk. Um, and the environmental working group did this, um, did this test, um, they examined the cord blood of newborns. So they tell you, I just gave it away, but in the when you watch the YouTube video, they will tell you that they, they, they took 10 Americans and, and they're from all parts of the country, from the North, the South, the East and the West. And somehow they all came up with similar toxins and things like that, like how did this happen? 
So they realized and it, what they were talking about was they were talking about newborn babies that were not even born yet, have not even breathed the breath of air in this world. And they were already exposed to as many as 287 toxins 413 toxic chemicals were in the study, um, an average 200 toxins found per baby, and 180 of those chemicals found are known cancer causes. Like, so this is happening but now before the baby's even born. Like that's what I'm talking about, generational or it's coming from the mom's blood. Like I said, the, the toxins are filtering through your body and your blood is causing it to swim in your tissues and your organs and the baby's getting the exposure to all these toxins in your body. So cancer rates in children has risen 67.1% since 1950. So that's, it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, according to Columbia University, 95% of cancer is caused by diet and environment. And it's also, it's caused by toxins in the environment. So when they say environment, that's what they mean. What's in our environment that's bad for us is cancer causing. So that's incredible because I think one in two people are going to be diagnosed with cancer. So I always say that when you're sitting around a, a table full of people, um, which we don't do today, but if you had six or seven people and you're in a room with them, um, one and two are gonna get diagnosed with cancer. To me, it's just, it's a scary statistic. Oops, sorry. Dr. Susan. Yes. The links are in the chat if they wanna grab them for oh, it's perfect. everything. Yeah, awesome. So yeah, if you wanna read that and um, listen to that, it'll tell you, it's really intriguing. I've heard about, this is not new information, I'll tell you that too. It was years ago that I heard about this and I was just, I couldn't believe it, but I talk about it all the time. So if any of my patients are on the call, they know I always talk about this because it's just unbelievable. It's an unbelievable statistic where you think, especially kids today, like why is this happening to them? Why do they have this? And you take them to the medical doctor and they give them medication after medication after medication. And like I said, we see this all the time with moms coming here desperate, like I can't put my child on another medication. They're only 15 years old or whatever it is. And it's like, certainly you can't do that. Like that's gonna have an end game. That's not gonna be a good one. So I talked about, I, talk, I always talk ahead of what my slide's gonna be. So Jessica makes these wonderful slides. And I just keep talking. So I'm sorry, Jessica, but we try. <laughs> I'm just a talker. You know that everyone knows that about me. But like I said, young adults of glyphosate generation born after 1997. Um, we talked about the glyphosate that's in the food supply. Um, but the thing is, I want to tell you this too, GRAS, G-R-A-S, and you can look up any of this stuff that I'm telling you, this is all from research, um, it's not my opinion, none of this is my opinion, um, but what GRAS is, is generally recognized as safe. So in the supermarket, you feel like I'm in the supermarket, everything must be safe or FDA approved, right? I mean, that's the thinking, wrong, because they have this general category where it's called generally recognized as safe. They know it's not safe, but they put in this category to make you believe it's okay. It's not okay. So that's scary. It's, it's, it's scary trickery going on to make you think that everything is safe and it's not. They're just saying it's generally recognized as safe. They recognize it as safe, but it is definitely not safe. Um, so 80,000 new chemicals were introduced to our food supply in the past seven years. So what is your body doing with these chemicals? Like everything that you eat, your body has to do something with it. So you're supposed to eat to live um, and all those foods are supposed to be broken down into the macronutrients that get used for biochemical pathways in the body. But when the body comes across a toxin or something, it doesn't even recognize or know what it is, what does it do with it? It's going to store it usually in fat tissue, somewhere where it's not going to hurt your organs. So it's going to store usually in visceral fat around the organs. So the, the fat will be used to protect the organs, but that's where it finds the body finds toxins to be useful, I guess, to put in deep tissue. Um, they have to, has to put it somewhere. It has to get categorized in the body. The body is amazing. Its main, main thing always is to survive. So if you think about, I always, I mean, I want to like provoke the thinking. If you think about this, think about everybody who wakes up in the morning and they have two cups of coffee and two glazed donuts, and then they go and drink two Red Bulls, and then they go and eat a, you know, a lunch the same way, you know, all that stuff. What is the body doing with all these chemicals? You know what I mean? And even food and fast food places, I always bring this to people's attention too. Like if you get French fries from anywhere, 
I'll say Chick-fil-A because I thought I was under the impression that they were just potatoes, right? No, go to their website and look at the, the ingredient list. If you, if there's so many ingredients you wouldn't believe and it's all chemicals. Um, the other thing I was talking about is the egg white delights, right? Oh, I'm gonna have an egg white delight. I think that's from McDonald's. There's not an egg to be found in that thing. So if you go and look at these, look for this information and look for these foods. They have the, it's all the information is there. I want to say that all the information is there on their website, but nobody goes there and looks. They just say, oh, egg white delight, that's healthy. Okay, but there's no egg in it. So it's not healthy, you know? And even, I mean, every, you can get information from anywhere, whether it's the CDC website or, you know, people email me all the time asking for information. I was just direct them to the websites because the websites have the information. They have to put it on there. You just have to go and you have to read it. And don't, don't just, assume it's good because chances are it isn't. So this level of disease rises at the level of chemicals rise. So we've been talking about how the chemicals have gone up and in the past seven years, they've gone up even more. So the levels of diseases you have to agree has been rising, rising and rising. It's just getting downright scary that, you know, how are we gonna, how are we gonna help this? How, what can we do? So I wanna talk about the blood brain barrier. So the blood brain barrier, is not formed in our brains until after the age of seven. So any chemicals introduced to the body um, before age seven go straight to the brain. So this is where I've seen um, young moms feeding their kids blue goo and blue Kool-Aid drinks and juice boxes and all those chemicals. You can't tell me that anything blue is a real food. So all those chemicals are going straight into the child's brain. Um, and even after the blood brain barrier is formed post seven, you don't want all those chemicals in your bodies for other reasons. So, but back to kids, 7,000 chemicals go straight into the brain before age seven. I mean, my gosh. Um, do you think maybe that's why childhood disease is on the rise? Like toxins play such a, a vital role in our bodies. It's incredible, but everyone's forgetting that our bodies were made, um, if you think back 100 years, I would send everybody back 100 years, think 100 years ago, you know, what our bodies were doing. And, and medical doctors back 100 years ago always looked at detoxification systems, always, because it's such an important, important function in our body that today is completely being ignored. Um, the liver, the liver is an amazing organ with so many functions in it, but the main function for us is detoxification. But if you're bombarding your liver daily with toxins or have your whole life, um, eventually something's gonna go wrong or it's gonna bleed into some part of your body that's gonna cause a sickness or a chronic disease um, over time. And usually it's around, well, when I was about 50 years old, at about 50, for me it was 40, it was a little younger. Um, but even today we see kids, like I said, or even 35 year olds having trouble having babies. Like just every single decade, I don't even like to talk about generations anymore, but every decade we see here at this office and every decade has a, a, just a host of problems. But most of them are coming from chemicals because they did not have these problems 100 years ago. And that's the thing that changed in our society. Our, our, our bodies are not used to this. Like I said, our bodies were designed perfectly by design. They were, they were meant to take those drop by drops in the bucket. Like I said, they were not used to the fire hose of chemicals and toxins that are getting introduced today. So that's where all the sickness is coming from. So chemicals have increased 1300% over the past 20 years. That's incredible. Um, it leads people to become immune toxic and also gut destroyers. So the toxins also destroy your gut. I feel like this is a, a topic in itself. Like I'm really not even going to delve into this very much because it's, it's an incredible topic, but I have so much to say about it. But everyone's trying to boost their immunity today or in the past year. Um, and if you think, you know, going and taking whatever it is that you were taking, vitamin C or whatever, it's not gonna, it's not gonna match up against the destruction that's been happening to your gut and your immune system in past years. I'm just, I'm just becoming very blunt in, in kind of in my old age because I can't see people suffer anymore. I, I really can't take it anymore. So there are three parts of the brain that are not protected by the blood brain barrier. So we talked about blood brain barrier in kids. Uh, but I want to talk about blood brain barrier in um, adults now, or you know, even you know, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, and on. Um, so the blood brain barrier does not protect your hypothalamus, your pituitary, or pineal gland. 
So the hypothalamus and the pituitary regulate the entire endocrine system. The endocrine system is your thyroid, your adrenal glands, your female reproductive or, uh, organs. Um, it's just incredible. Um, pineal gland regulates your sleep. So how many people are having trouble with this today with thyroid um, issues? I mean, we say that all the time. I mean, probably a couple of times a week, um, sleep issues, um, female hormone issues. I mean, we see this all the time. I'm sure you hear about it all the time. This is the cause because toxins have gone to these parts of the brain because um, it's not protected by the blood brain barrier so that those toxins have to be removed. So there you go. So <laughs> parts of the brain that are the master regulator of thyroid, adrenal glands, female hormones, reproductive organs, sleep, weight loss, resistance, chronic pain. Who's having trouble with these? Everyone. I mean, we hear this every day, all the time. It's not lack of a medication that everybody's in pain. And pain is the last thing I want to tell you that if somebody's in pain or chronic pain, it's because they've already their body just can't take anymore. That is the last symptom. So once they're in pain, they've ignored eight or nine other symptoms. It's just like me when I had the symptoms of hair loss and weight loss resistance, I could not lose weight even with diet and exercise. Um, fatigue, I had all those things. Like I mentioned, I was ignoring them. And then I didn't have chronic pain. I had incredible pain with the MS. I had debilitating pain, but a lot of people suffer from chronic pain in their joints, I mean, their bodies, um, now being diagnosed with fibromyalgia, um, which is an autoimmune condition, which is totally reversible. Um, I just, you have to have to believe in the body. You have to look for the root cause. So even if you now don't listen to anything else tonight that I'm saying, I'm just asking you to look into this, look into the root cause, look into things that I'm talking about that, that's happening in our bodies, look back to hundred years ago, how, what they, how they handle things, how they look at detoxification systems. Detoxification system was a main part of the medical world until big pharma came in the 1940s. So it was something that always happened. Um, and I'm going to talk about it in just a minute, you know, ways you can start helping yourself, things you can do that, that really can, can help, even if it's if not getting rid of the root cause at the moment, there are things that will help detoxification of your body, and then you can look into the root cause, but it can definitely help some symptoms or things that you're suffering from. Dr. Manias, I also stuck the link for the Toxemia book that was written in the early 1900s oh, yeah. into the chat. If you guys want to, they have it on Amazon. It's a really short book. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so Toxemia Explained uh, by Dr. Tilden. It was a book I read when I was sick um, and it was about toxemia in our bodies. So I talked about it in another talk. So Jessica has that link. It's an amazing book. Uh, it dealt a lot with stress, um, stress in the body. The cells could not detoxify because they were overburdened by having to deal with stress in the, in the, in the life of the person. But if you think about today, and I know this is probably like the next slide, I'm going to talk about it anyway, the, the cells of today are getting very, cell inflammation is a huge part of today's problem. So toxins are drawn to the cell membrane because it has a fatty lipid bilayer. So back to high school biology, the fatty lipid bilayer of the cell, that's what toxins are drawn to, fats. So the cells become inflamed. So what resides on the cell membrane? Hormone receptors. So that's where you have the issues with thyroids. It's not that you're not making the thyroid hormone, the hormone can't get into the cell. It's not that you can't lose weight, you have insulin resistance because the insulin cannot get into the cell to be used. So it's every hormone, every hormone. The hormones are the messengers in our bodies. They do us know, and if they can't get into the cell because of cellular inflammation, because of toxins, that's gonna cause a whole host of problems. And when that book was written, I think it was 1927 when that book was written, he wasn't even thinking of this toxicity problem, but he was thinking of cells being toxic because our bodies make metabolic waste in the cells every single day as a metabolic function. So what needs to happen is that those your body needs to have the energy to detox out those cells. But more than that now in today's world in 2021, our cell membranes are now becoming very rigid instead of fluid. So toxins can't flow out of the cell membranes and nutrients flow in and hormones flow in um, because we're inflamed, the cells are inflamed. So it goes down to a cellular level with me always um, because people ignore the cells largely. Everyone thinks of our bodies, as I always say, like a bucket of chicken because that's kind of how the medical world looks at everything. They look at your thyroid, they look at your arm, they look at your shoulder, they look at a reproductive organ. They just look at everything as separate 
separate parts. They never talk about the liver. They never talk about those important organs in our body. Um, so it's just, there's like a set, set parameter in the medical world. They can only diagnose things that they can have a, an insurance code for. So they're kind of locked into what they can and can't do. So that's not their fault. I'll tell you that. Um, even blood markers, I order about 75 blood markers on a patient when I do a blood analysis on them. The medical world has no chance of ordering 75 mark markers because they can't tell why they're looking into these markers. So they can't charge insurance companies for these markers. So it's just, the healthcare system is just really in a mess. It's not a healthcare system. We would say it's a sick care system because you go there when you're sick and you stay sick. And then you come back and get checked again in six months to you're still sick and get put on another pill. Um, healthcare is what, what I talk about here, functional healthcare paradigm that, I'm, that I use to recover my health. Um, and that's preventative and restorative and putting you on the path to optimal health and having the belief in the body that it can overcome just about anything. Um, but the thing is, inflammation in the body is one of the root causes today. Seven out of 10 leading causes of death in America are caused by inflammation. So everybody knows they have inflammation. So I talked about turmeric. Um, everybody knows that inflammation is a big issue. And they think if they take turmeric, they won't be inflamed. But, but I, if you heard what I said before, that does not help inflammation. I mean, it, it could help inflammation, but it's going to block your um, phase one liver detoxification pathway. So let me tell you this, toxins drive inflammation. So that's the root cause of inflammation. It's the toxicity. So the turmeric's not gonna help. It might help a little, it might help at first, but it's not gonna help permanently. So I look for permanent solutions to health. I wanted to be on the permanent solution to health. I wanted to be on the right path to health, to optimal health. I want to have endless energy, boundless energy. I want my mind to work. I always wanted to know what was going on in my body. I didn't want to be in any drugs. I don't believe in drugs. Um, so I look at the root cause of things, like I said, and toxins drive inflammation in the body. So that's the number one thing we always I'm want. Too. So if you look at some of these diagnoses, Alzheimer's, diabetes, I mean, Alzheimer's is a scary diagnosis, but that was the paper I was talking about before that I wanted to leave the video on. Um, Alzheimer's is caused by metals, heavy metals, aluminum and lead particularly. Um, chemicals, pesticides, and smoking or secondhand smoke. Um, autoimmune is caused by mercury, chemicals, silicone breast implants, nutrient deficiencies, all these things. Um, chronic fatigue syndrome. I mean, I thought, I mean, I actually did have chronic fatigue syndrome because I was always tired, but so many people are diagnosed with, with chronic fatigue syndrome because they're always tired. So they get this diagnosis, but the root cause is metals, lead and mercury. Um, and chemicals and pesticide, depending on the age, the age group that you're in or the decade that you're in. Fibromyalgia is chemical pesticides. Fluoride is a big thing. Um, the fluoride that was put in water, um, um, any cognitive problems, poor memory, numbness, tingling, immune system issues, you know, night sweats, all these things that, that we all suffer from, musculoskeletal issues. Um, they're all, they all have the root cause of toxicity in the body. I already said this too, cancer is seen in one to two people. That's downright scary. I mean, cancer used to be the scariest diagnosis out there. And now it's just, it's like common. It's not like, you know, if you have cancer, it's what kind of cancer do you have? That's how autoimmunity is. Oh, you have autoimmune disease, no big deal. Which one do you have? I mean, it's just incredible to me. Your body's attacking itself. Like that was not okay with me. It shouldn't be okay with anybody. So if you have autoimmunity in your body, but you don't want to take care of it, then you just, you, the next thing you're going to have is cancer. Like when I was diagnosed, when I looked down the road, I was like, I'm looking at my future self, the way my body was and all the issues I had and all the underlying root causes I had, if I didn't correct them, I was dead beeline for a cancer diagnosis. There's no doubt in my mind. I also was told I had the bones of an 80 year old woman. That's because when your body is sick or the sickness in your body, your body's amazing and it's gonna to try to survive no matter what it has to do. So we'll get minerals from anywhere it can, from your bones, your teeth, that's it. will just draw the minerals out so it can keep keep going on and keep you, keep, keep you running through your day and not paying attention um, as much as it can until it falls sick, like it, like I fell sick. So you can't ignore all the symptoms. Symptoms are a sacred messenger from your body. It's the only way your body has to talk to you. If you ignore all these symptoms, 
the diagnosis is down the road. You know what I mean? It is. I know it is. I know it was for me. So not only did I reverse the MS and autoimmunity and inflammation in my body, I reversed a future cancer diagnosis, future osteoporosis diagnosis. I, I don't even, and more autoimmune diagnoses, because I'll tell you that too. If you don't fix the root cause of autoimmunity, now you may be diagnosed with one. I've seen people have seven because they didn't fix the root causes of the autoimmunity and they just took medication. The body, like I said, it'll just keep, keep going, keep going, keep creating different, attacking different organs. They'll attack the body differently and they'll just keep giving you names and names and names and medication and medication. It's like a never ending cycle. So it just depends which cycle you want. Do you want healthcare or do you want sick care? So 90% of the United States is has undiagnosed autoimmune disease. So years ago, when I was diagnosed, 10 years ago, or it's actually now it's almost 11 years ago, diagnosed, there was 40 names autoimmune conditions. You know, now there's 140. I bet you that's even higher now. So it was probably maybe a year or two ago when I, I looked that up. I bet you it's higher now. It was 40. It's now 140. Because when they don't know what to call something, they take the, di the, the symptoms that somebody's experiencing, get a group of people that are experiencing the same thing, and they name it. And they call it something. And that, that's how they come up with a new autoimmune condition. So if the symptoms match, you'll be diagnosed and then medicated. Um, the medication for autoimmunity, I'll tell you right now, the medical world does not have an answer to autoimmunity. They don't because they'll give, they do an ANA blood marker, which is for lupus and see if that comes back positive. That's all they test for. And they will give you a steroid. It's an anti-inflammatory drug, a steroid. You'll, you'll take that and that's their answer. Their answers are not good. I've seen a lot of them. I've talked to people who've been put on chemotherapy for autoimmunity. I mean, it's just insane what they're doing to people, but they're destroying their guts. They're destroying their bodies. And it's not going to have any good outcome. I know that, but I'm just like, it's so incredible today what's happening in the world. Um, but medication is not the answer. You need to find the root cause of the problem. So this is cellular inflammation I was talking about. I had cellular inflammation because I had heavy metal toxicity. So it was perpetuating the inflammation in my body, the heavy metals were. So I had 40 years of all these metal amalgams in my body. Then I also had the lead that I got in utero from my mom. Um, and then whatever else was going on in my life, whatever food I was eating that I was eating healthy, as I said, but I'm, I was not eating hundred percent organic. So I was getting all this stuff. I, it was a lot of toxicity in my body. So again, my diagnosis was five years to a wheelchair, 10 years till I was dead. What most people do when they get this diagnosis is they, they just fall victim. This is what's going to happen to me. There's nothing I can do. I've been diagnosed with this, that, or the other thing. Um, and they just have this victim mentality. They have no, there's no way they can be helped. That's not true. I'm here to tell you. That's why I tell my story. It's not because I'm so great. I'm not great. I just am telling the story because I want you to know there is a way. There is a way to find your root causes to remove them and let the body heal itself. I don't care what you have. It doesn't matter to me anymore. I've helped cancer patients. I've helped people with weight loss. I've helped people with autoimmunity. I've helped people with type one and type two herpes and cured it and reversed it in them. I mean, that's known to be something you can't reverse, right? We reversed it. So anyway, like I said, this is my 50th year. I'm supposed to be dead by now, but I'm not dead. This was my metals test. Um, so this is how I found out by testing um, the right way that I had had metals in my body. So you see the lead is right here in the middle. And it was much more than the mercury, which I had mercury. I knew it. A lot of people have thallium and cesium. So if you had, um, you were exposed, like again, at my age, we were exposed to secondhand smoke. Our parents just smoke in the car with the windows rolled up. So we were all exposed to smoke. That's thallium and cesium. That's where it comes from. And there's probably other, other things on that you can recognize. Lead and mercury are two of the biggest, biggest ones. And aluminum also is a big one. Um, but they're in there. They can be tested for. I don't usually test for them because I can see it in the blood work. So I'll talk about the blood work that I do in the analysis and I can see these metals. So I don't ever ask anybody to spend money on a test that I can see in the blood work. There's no reason for it. So the body requires um, energy to use. Two systems require all the energy of the body. So that's digestion and detoxification. So that's how our body was created. 
So the thing is, if you think about the world today where everybody's eating every two hours, we're constantly eating, we're constantly digesting, that is not leaving time for detoxification. So that's why now intermittent fasting has become another big buzz word that around and a lot of people are intermittent fasting. Um, and that's good that they are. And they'll say it might have worked, worked at first or maybe it didn't work. Um, and it's because it won't work forever. So any change you make in your body, your body will adapt to. So you'll lose weight or you'll feel great, but it'll only be for a short amount of time until you get really to the root of the problem. Um, but the thing that intermittent fasting does, or even more extended fasting, and we're going to be talking more about this. We're actually going to do a class about fasting. Um, so I think Jessica will talk about that after maybe, but we have a class coming up for that. So if you check our Facebook page, um, you'll get information for that. Um, but the thing is, we're going to eat every two hours. You're not leaving any time for toxification. So like I said, fire hose of toxins coming to the body in today's world. If we're eating every two hours and we're spending a lot of time digesting, we are not giving the body time to de detoxify or empty the bucket. So the bucket is overflowing. When the bucket overflows, that's when all the symptoms come. I have a big picture in my office with that. And people sit and look at it and they're like, oh yeah, I have that, I have that, I have that, I have that. And they, they look at all the things they have. And we can send anybody that picture if they want to see it. We can send you anything you saw tonight, we will send you information on if you want to see it. But that's where all these symptoms are coming from. All right, so I'm going to talk to you now about some tips that you can do just to help, help, help empty your bucket a little bit. So it doesn't replace finding the root cause. Cause like I said, I was doing all the lifestyle things, the healthy things, and, and it does not reverse the root cause. I still had MS. You still have to find out the root causes, but you can start with these things. So in removing the sources, you want to eat organic. You want to eliminate inflammatory oils. So inflammatory oils are vegetable oils, canola oil, seed oils, things like that. Again, you can reach out to us. We're going to give you a way to reach out to us. We'll give you any information about this that you want. If you need more information, um, think dirty is an app that I always recommend to people. It's an app and it has like a scanner on and you scan any product in the store that you think is a good product. And it's, it's going to be fine for your body. This app will tell you if it's not, if it's a carcinogen, so when I found out about this app, I went to CVS and Neutrogena used to be a good product. And, you know, it's not the one I use. I don't, ever since I've been diagnosed, I don't use any personal care products. Um, but this one was one I thought was maybe good. So I went to CVS and I scanned those barcodes. They all were like, I think the score was a 10. It has to be under four. They all had carcinogens and then they're all cancer causing. So I, I tell you, please get this app on your phone. I mean, before you buy something, check it out and see if it has um, toxins in it or carcinogens. Uh, My Green Refills is a laundry detergent. I love this company. They're amazing. Their website actually has a ton of information about laundry detergent and laundry enzymes. And they're, they're, they're into saving, saving the earth from plastic bottles, but their product is amazing. So that's definitely something I'd say look into that. Um, essential oils for home freshening and carpets and things like that. And we have recipes for things, or we have mixtures that you can combine in your home to, I always diffuse those things in my home, just if you want it to smell better, rather than using the sprays and the chemicals and all that stuff. And I always refer to Laura Adler because she is the expert on these things, personal care products and also toxins in the world. So you can check her out because that's a great, she's a great, a great person to look to for these things. And a lot of people, these people have videos and things like that you can look on YouTube. Dr. Susan, real quick, yeah. just to go back to the essential oils, you guys also make sure that you're using pure ones. Don't go to like Walmart or Target and buy the ones there because they're going to be full of fillers and chemicals too. And sometimes people get confused with that. Yeah. So just call our office or email us or any questions about that stuff. So like Jessica said, you definitely want to have a good um, food grade. We have tons of recipes and I say recipes, but it's not that you're going to be eating them or in some cases you are but we can make deodorants, shampoos, essential oils are amazing. I love them. I always use them. My medicine box is an essential oil box. So I think I have a video on YouTube about that, where I pointed out the different oils that I use because that's my medicine cabinet. I, have, I haven't taken a stitch of medicine in 10 years, not even aspirin, um, will not put it in my body. Um, so fasting, I talked about this a little bit. I talked about intermittent fasting, but fasting, the point of it is the energy diversion. So we'll take the energy away from digesting and it'll put it towards detoxifying. 
So it's a simple practice. It's free. It's something you can you can do yourself. Um, we're happy to help you. And also, like I said, we're going to be having a class about that. Um, but you can definitely email or ask us more information about it. We'll be always be happy to send that to you. So you want to improve your circulation. So that happens by, I always talk about simple walking, walking outside, especially. I love that just to be in touch with nature, but walking. That's the way the lymphatic system circulates um, in your body. It's by muscle movement. So you want to make sure that you're not just sitting all day or sitting in traffic. That was me a couple of years ago. I used to sit in traffic sometimes four to five hours a day. And that really was not good for my health. So you have to, you have to circulate your blood. Um, so this way the lymphatic can, can, can filter the, the toxins and things that get into us just by living in this world. Um, it's, a, it's a great way just to improve your circulation. You can do dry skin brushing. That's something I've been doing for probably 20 years. Um, exercise, I said, Juve Light is a way you can detoxify or infrared light therapy. And many places have that around. You can Google that or look in their website. And I'm just asking you, look up these things. Just look in the website, get more information. So you want to make sure you enhance an elimination. So that means how many times a day or making sure every day that you go to the bathroom. So I can't tell you how many people I see. We talk about elimination here in this office, but they'll, they only go once a week or once every two weeks. And it's unbelievable to me because actually you should go every time you eat, but you should at least go once a day. So your liver does a toxic dump into the gut in the middle of the night, and that should be eliminated in the morning. Um, but that may be a sign if you're not doing that, that you might need some gut repair. So again, just always look into the root causes, but these are the way you see that things, something is wrong in your body. Um, you wanna always stimulate your liver. And I always say to do that with your castor oil packs, a coffee enema. There are supplements that will open those downstream pathways. Lemon water is awesome, a milk thistle. So those are just ways to stimulate the liver. Um, colon cleanses, those are all like kind of those are downstream pathways. Those are not upstream causes, but they will clear out downstream pathways and at least eliminate some of the toxic load in your body. So I do recommend them as tools in your toolbox for sure. Um, definitely, definitely use all these things. It's incredible. It just does not replace getting rid of the root, but it's definitely gonna help. And then regenerate the cell membranes is by avoiding the inflammatory oils that I talked about. So vegetable oil, canola oil, seed oils, you don't want to be eating them. You want to eat more healthy fats because you have to eat the fats to regenerate the cell membrane um, for all the reasons I talked about. Um, and also try to transform the stress in your life. So energy is not negatively diverted. So that's where the Toxemia Explained book comes in. Your body could get very toxic because there's too much of a stress load and your body's dealing too much with the stress. It's not having time to detox even the simplest thing as metabolic waste. Um, and that adds adds to sickness, you know, and I always say when you have weight that you can't lose, it's because there's sickness in your body. Even if it's stress that you just, you can't lose weight, that's always a sign. So please take that as a sign. We're not meant to have extra pounds on our body. So if you're suffering from that, from weight loss resistant, it's a real clue that something is not right in your body. So if you've tried a lot of these things or, or once you try these things, if it's not, still not working or if you have issues or if you have undiagnosed diseases or diagnoses, they don't want to be on the medicine or you don't feel like you're getting the answers in the medical world, um, we, we ask you to come and call us. We would love to help you. Um, so when we in this office, we do an extensive history on everybody. Like I said, our paperwork is probably 20 to 30 pages long because I want to know what happened in your whole life, um, what you're exposed to. But even more so than that, the functional blood chemistry analysis that I do, this is how I recovered my health. I wouldn't replace this for anything in the world. So in 2013, I started doing this two years after my diagnosis. So what it does, and, and again, we can send you, I have a whole paper, Jessica made a beautiful paper explaining what functional blood chemistry analysis is. I'm happy to share that with you, but it is where I am looking at optimal levels. There was levels that you're supposed to be in the physiological level in your body, your blood ranges, not the medical ranges or the medical normal ranges, which change frequently. They're very broad and it's very hard to fall out of the range. So a lot of people feel sick and I always use thyroid for an, for an example in this. They're being told that thyroids are fine and they know they're sick. Women are very intuitive with their health and they say something's wrong with my thyroid. I know it, but the doctor keeps telling my blood work is fine. 
Well, if you do my blood analysis, I say it's like a 3D look at the blood work because I look in optimal levels. I trace patterns in the blood um, and I get to the root causes. This is the way I get to root causes of issues in the body and where I can see everything in a systematic way, all systems, our bodies are all connected. So where you're feeling like for me with MS, I mean, my brain was the thing that was having damage done to it. I didn't fix anything in my brain per se. It was a lot of other things. I had a lot of nutritional deficiencies, gut issues, food sensitivities, um, aside from toxins, before I realized how much toxins and heavy metals were the root cause, I was fixing all these things. But you don't go to where the pain is, you really have to go to where the root cause is. So one of the big root causes of today also is cellular inflammation. As I said, we have a test for that also. It's called the Meta-Oxy test. It's an inexpensive test for you. Um, we're going to give you a good price on that tonight. And it'll just let us know or let you know if you have cellular inflammation. So all those things I talked about, if the hormones are not getting into the cell, if you can't lose weight, all the things I talked about. The Meta-Oxy test is a simple, it's a simple urine test. Um, it's like a little tiny vial. You put urine in it and it's a simple, simple test. You could do it at home. So even if you're not in the state, you can't come to the office. We ship them out all over the place just to know if cell inflammation is indeed a problem. So functional blood chemistry analysis is very different from your yearly blood work because I look at, like I said, about 73 to 75 biomarkers. The medical world never looks at that many. Look at maybe 15 to 20 possibly. Um, so I see a lot more, I trace patterns, I look at systems, I look at optimal levels, it's very different from your yearly blood work. But I do this functional blood chemistry analysis on myself, I used to do it every three months. And when things change, I would be able to see it, I'd be able to make changes to progress my health further. So in this office, what we do in our um, functional health care um, programs, we, we have them check their blood once a year, um, once a year do a detoxification once a year, and we look for all the things in the blood work. So this way, if they are coming, something is not right in the body, we're able to see it long before it becomes a diagnosis. So we check their blood every year, we do the functional blood chemistry analysis, and we can see you right away. And just for an example, a, a person that comes to mind, I had her all perfect on perfect path to health, and then suddenly the yearly blood work came up, I did it, and she actually had contracted H. pylori in her gut. So we found it right away, we gave her a supplement um, regimen for two months, I think, and it was gone. So that's the beautiful thing about it is we can recheck and recheck. When I was I was diagnosed with MS, I was given, I think, uh, I can't even tell you how much money, thousands of dollars of tests to do. And nobody ever looked back at them or checked them. So when I started practicing, I said, there's no way I'm going to do that. Like, I want something I can check regularly that's not going to cost thousands of dollars for the person to recheck it. I want something that I can check regularly to be sure that we are progressing and I can prove to the person we are progressing and not by symptoms. Like your symptoms may go away, you may feel great. That doesn't mean you are great. So we look at both the symptoms and the blood. We look at your blood, the blood does not lie. And you do it in the way I do with the analysis, all the answers are given. Oops, sorry, that's the wrong way. This is the metaoxy test I was talking about. That's the test that looks for um, inflamed cells, damaged cells, dying cells. We can see if that is happening um, in your body and know if that's an issue for you. I'm a big fan of knowing what's going on in my body. Um, so again, there's BJ Palmer. And I'll just say again, remember the root cause, you have to remove it and the body can heal. So believe it, I'm living proof that this is this happens. And we have many patients now. It's not only about me. It's about, it's about what the body can do. And we have so many stories of people who have done the same thing. I applied what I did to them and they recovered also from a lot of different things. So what we have to offer you tonight is I always want to offer everybody a free consultation. So if you're suffering from something or you want more information about something, you're welcome to always email our office and get whatever information you need or looking for or want more information on. Um, I always do a free 20 minute consultation for anyone who's interested. Um, Metaoxy test tonight, if you're interested in finding out about cellular inflammation, you can do that. $49 is what we're going to charge. It's normally $199. Um, and the blood work and the report of findings, um, the analysis of the blood work, will get $50 off of that also. That will include the blood. So the blood, the analysis of it that I do, and then also the report of findings, it's usually about a 45 minute call with me to hear what I find in the blood. So to me, that's priceless because if you do just that and do that once a year, you can just have a handle on, on your, on, 
on your body and what's going on in it. I just don't think the, the blood work you get at the medical office every year tells you anything at all. I mean, I see it all the time. I had five people, four people, I'm sorry, four people in 2019, I'll never forget June, 2019, four people who were seemingly healthy. They went for medical physicals every single year because they all had um, good jobs, good medical insurance, um, went to all their routine exams and everything. Um, they were, the picture of this. So you would think they're the picture of health. They all looked healthy. They were all normal weight. All four of them were diagnosed with cancer in June of, of um, 2019. And I almost fell off my chair with every single one of them. So when that happened, um, they weren't my patients. They were people, they were patients in the office I worked in. Um, they weren't my patients specifically, but I was shocked because then they all came to me. I got this cancer diagnosis. What can we do? Can you help me? Even though I've got this diagnosis and I do help people with that because I work in conjunction with the medical doctor and they go through chemo and things like that, but they make the lifestyle changes with me to help their body, um, deal with the chemo. Um, but I have embedded seven or eight biomarkers into my blood report now that screens for cancer. So we had somebody um, not too long ago, she was actually under functional medicine care for five years and she was actually referred to me from a functional medicine practitioner. Um, so I did her, she did her blood work, I did her analysis and I was like, oh my gosh, what the heck? I never saw anything like this. I was like, does she have cancer? Um, so I was going to, she was coming in on Wednesday. This was on Tuesday. I was, I got to tell her on Wednesday when she comes in, I need her to go to the medical doctor because I think she has cancer. Like I was going to tell her this horrible thing. Um, she called on Tuesday and left a message. She needed to cancel her Wednesday appointment because she was in the hospital with cancer. So that was one of the saddest stories to this day that I, I ever tell, but, but that is what the functional blood chemistry analysis can prevent from your life.